Now, this is a nice little model. It demonstrates everything there is in a golf stroke. It's a circular motion, is it not? This is a circular motion. Circular motion on a plane executing a hinge action of the club face. Now, once we understand that, we get the idea that we have this left arm flying wedge, you know, under the heel of the hand. We have a wedge shape here at the top, and it has a plane of motion, and it's perpendicular. Even on an inclined plane, you still have a perpendicular cocking and uncocking of this left wrist. It's a hammer, like exactly like you would do a hammer. If I bend it this way, I'm out of plane. If I arch it that way, I'm out of plane. So it is a vertical motion executed on an incline. This is the left arm flying wedge. And it's this entire left arm flying wedge that is mounted at the left shoulder. And it looks like this. It looks like a door, kind of familiar, huh? That's what it's doing. And what does the door do? It opens and closes, just like so. So you have an opening of the door and a closing of the door, an opening of the door and a closing of the door. If I had a hinge pin mounted this way, that club face, look at it, right down the line. See that, see that toy of that club? It's going right down the line. On the other hand, if I mounted the door this way, then it's going to go like this. It's going to operate with a laying back only of the club face. You could set a glass on that club face. I am not doing that with my wrist. It's this whole entire left arm flying wedge that's moving through. And remember, this is staying in a line. It's not bending out this way. It's not arching this way. So that gives us rhythm. The club shaft and the left forearm staying in line, whether it lays back only, whether it closes only, or whether it simultaneously closes and lays back. See, if I mount the hinge perpendicular to the angle plane, then I get some close and some layback. I get a half roll of the club face. So we have these fields involved. We have a club face, mo club face motion. Let me get a dowel here for a second. Give us a target line. Club face motion, closing door this way. Lay it down, it looks like so. The door has fully closed. Now notice, I didn't twist that club. I didn't twist it to the right, I didn't twist it to the left. I simply kept the left wrist, we'll get another dowel or something. I kept this left wrist perpendicular to the ground. This way. It's closing like a door. This position is the same as this position. This position is the same as this position. This did not feel like a roll, but clearly down here it looks like a roll and it feels like a roll, but it is not a twist. You're not twisting it open and twisting it closed. You're simply staying perpendicular to the ground. Can you see that? You're staying perpendicular to the ground, this way, perpendicular to the floor. Now, with the club face then, that has a full roll, which wasn't a twist, remember? Your hand was staying perpendicular to the ground, and it looks like that. It had the feel of a roll. A full roll of the club face had the feel of a roll. On the other hand, if that club face laid back only, this way, the whole left arm wedge laying back here, that has a, a clockwise motion of the hand. It is a deliberate manipulation. It is not counterclockwise, it's the normal, it's clockwise. And that feels like a reverse roll. It looks like that. On the other hand, if I have an angle stroke, well, it just feels like no roll. Just like this felt like no roll up on this plane, horizontal, and this felt like no roll in the vertical plane. See, those two guys feel like no roll until you drop them down here. Then that one feels like a roll, and this one feels like a reverse roll. See? And the angle plane is no roll. And then you've got a club face that goes halfway across. So we have three motions to club face, close only, and that feels like a roll, and it produces a full roll of the club face. So we have a horizontal hinge action, excuse me, that was horizontal hinge action, a vertical hinge action, keeps the club face square, that is no roll of the club face, that feels like a reverse roll. And then we have the angle hinge action, that feels like a no roll, and it produces a half roll of the club face. So full roll of the club face, feels like a roll, horizontal hinge half roll of the club face, feels like a no roll, is angle hinging. Vertical hinging, feels like a reverse roll, and it produces a no roll of the club face. So that's what hinge action is all about, and it's in operation from impact to the end of the follow through, both arms straight. Now after that, something else has got to happen. And that something else is swivel action. Swivel action is not hard. You have got to get out of just both arms straight. Now that's the end of your stroke, that's, that's all you've got. You've got no swivel action. And that's not a swivel. That's a vertical hinge action. Can you see that? The club has not swiveled. It's just stayed vertical this way. It's not steering, though. <laughs> How do we get to swivel? Look at this. That's not hard. 
this is the way you're built. Go to this side, go to this side. This is the natural position. Although you feel like you want to be here because you're trying to get the baby golf ball to go straight, but it doesn't work like that. It's here. And it's here. It is laying back against the plane. It has come back against the plane. See that? Yeah. So, you're in this position. So you have come through your vertical at the ground, that's here, and now you have rolled it, swiveled it, on plane, this way. And if you come up a little bit with that shoulder as you come out of it, as most of us do, it's going to actually look like the back end is going more toward the ground, but it is not twisting all the way down there. It is simply swiveled back against the plane. So you have this motion. Can you see that? If that's your baseline, you look like this. That's the swivel action. It is not difficult. But you were not doing that here. That is a swivel, and that club face is now doing this as you go through it, and that's not a good thing. You will clear out the whole left side of the golf course if you're a, if you're a decent player coming through there. On the other hand, well, you will just clear out the left side. The, the, average, the bad guy coming at it from the outside for a slicer, he doesn't do that. He just holds on for dear life trying to get it going back that way. So hinge action is from impact to follow through. Swivel action then takes over, swivels the club back onto the plane this way. For the finish. The left wrist stays flat because the left wrist stays flat. The left arm flying wedge stays intact. You see? Swoop back, recopying the cut, and you want that shot fly right down the barrel. This is hinge action. This is swivel action. They are different, they have their place. You need both to play power golf and to play accurate golf.